together. That is the average time that you have to hold a persuadable voter's attention on a given topic after introducing yourself. It's like really tough, right? It's the whole thing. Who had someone that did a really good job of persuading you on something really random inside of the room? And we're going to go to our friends on Twitter in a hot minute, too. Anyone have a good persuasion conversation? See, you're not trained on this. Our campaigns spend $1.2 billion every 2.5 years and don't do this. I'm going to hear from folks we haven't heard from yet. Yeah, right here. OK, who did you talk to? Um, I talked to you. Do you remember your name? All right, we're going to have you guys come up front. Sorry. Here we go. <laughs> yep, this is organizer school. Organizer school is not a lecture because adult learning theory says that adults do not learn via lectures. So we're going to have you guys mimic your two minute uh, mimic. Just do it, actually. Have your two minute persuasion conversation. And we're going to critique this as if we're critiquing people at doors in red states that we're engaging with. So, um, or as if we're critiquing conversations with elected officials trying to persuade them. All right, so um, who is the persuader? Who's the organizer? And who's the persuadable voter or elected? You're the persuadable, and you're the organizer? I am. All right, and Meredith has some experience being an organizer, so this is going to be really fun. Very good. All right, so ready? <laughs> what, what was the weird random topic you decided to do persuasion on? So I was trying to persuade my unfortunate voter to come to John Harvard's tonight after this event to continue the conversation. Whoa, beer is like not a hard persuasion topic, but we will. <laughs> John Harvard's maybe has sticky floors or something gross, so we'll allow it. Um, all right, ready, set, the timer is on, go. Sure, so what brought you here this evening? Um, I am interested in radical education and local organizing. Awesome, great. Do you <laughs> Use the mic, yeah. Sure. Uh, do you think that there are people in this room who you might have something to learn from, who you might be able to connect with? Yeah, I think, I think probably. Awesome, great. Do this. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be great. OK. <laughs> um, so before you came to the session, did you have plans for what you were thinking you would do after you left here this evening? Um, yeah, I actually do have plans after. I'm going to dinner at a friend's house. Do. Ah, who's your friend? <laughs> <laughs> um, my friend Nyasha. Okay, so does Nyasha know that you're here this evening? Um, I'm not sure she does, actually. Okay, uh, do you think Nyasha would be surprised if she found out that you're here this evening? Does she know this is the type of thing you'd be at? Um, no, I don't think she'd be too surprised. Okay, um, so if you imagine calling Nyasha and telling her, can't come to dinner tonight because I got to continue the conversation with these folks I met at resistance school. What do you think she'd say? I think she'd be supportive of that. Yeah, I think she would probably not be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> so since we still have 30 seconds left, do you think you could pick up your phone and call Naisha now and just give her a heads up? <laughs> That was epic and on time. <laughs> what was awesome about that? What was, what, what was different from how you guys normally persuade people? I can tell you how, what's different from how I normally persuade people. Let's hear from folks we haven't heard from, actually. Up front, yeah. Well, she, used the, she used some of the, um, the words yeah. of, of, of her, the person she was talking to and channeled that energy towards her overall goal. Yeah, Not like almost back to that Tim McCarthy values presentation, right? Like right. you use their same values and their same words and you can create linkages and it, it didn't feel, it felt authentic. Yeah, like she she was did, it's not like she, had, she didn't have counter arguments as to like, you know, it's not like she said, you know, you should do this. Yeah. It was more like, Ask not like a learning, like m moving her towards yep. uh, options. Yep, basically. okay, what else was good about that? Anyone else? Yep, right there behind. She asked lots of questions and yeah. brought her into the conversation right away. There was no lecturing from how the many, get go. How many statements did she make? Almost none. Almost zero. So the crazy thing is, all of us think that policy facts, like if we were, genuinely, I'm not kidding, I'm mimicking all of you back to yourselves. If you were trying to persuade this person naturally to like um, support uh, paid parental leave, most of us would probably automatically launch into facts. How many people feel like unequipped to have that conversation without facts? I do. And I'm like a professional organizer, right? Um, what actually ends up scientifically, behaviorally, in every study we've ever done convincing people is either asking them questions, identifying shared values, and like repeating it back to them, or stories. So you didn't really use a story, but did anyone else have a person that used a story? 
you guys had a person. We're going to have one quick thank you. Round of applause for you guys. We're going to have one last debrief from someone who used a story, and then we're going to. One last debrief from someone who used a story, and then we're going to wrap up with my little adorable, unforgettable um, acronym for how you can remember how to do this when you're feeling all lizard brain. So, you guys used a story where I'm not going to make you come up, but what? tell us what you were persuading each other on. And hi to everyone that's on camera and that's uh, attending from all over the world. I hope that you had wonderful persuasion conversations with yourselves as well. Awkwardly. Okay. They, volu they volunteered, but it was my story. Oh my gosh, you were overhearing the super persuasive. Okay, what was your story? I was the persuader. Yeah. Uh, what they asked me to persuade them of was uh, to support school vouchers. Okay. And I started out leading with some fact and, yeah. and posing some general ideas. But then I remembered that my personal growing up and my education. I was taken out of a school and put into a school that was separate and special. Okay. And it dramatically changed. It altered my whole entire life okay. because I was exposed to children from backgrounds and economic strata yeah. and all sorts of things that I wouldn't have had yeah. otherwise. And they started getting interested in that story. And who was your persuadable voter that you were persuading? The parents. The parents. Yeah. And okay, hand the microphone to the parents. What did you feel? When your persuader, persuader organizer um, got like kind of personal and vulnerable with you, I liked the story. It Why? was a good story. Um, I guess it was something that I could relate to. Okay, yeah, it felt relatable. That she's asking like a good question. No, it's okay to relate. Yeah, <laughs> so stories. We relate to stories. It's humans. It's like the oldest trick in the book. 